Hey there, Ruby fans. Welcome to another episode of the AfterBuzz TV uh, Ruby sort of after show on AfterBuzz TV. We've got a wonderful interview with, for you guys today with the star of the show, Lindsay Jones. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, AfterBuzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hey, AfterBuzz TV fans. Welcome again to the Ruby After Show. Uh, today we are doing a special interview with the star of the show, Lindsay Jones. Let me go ahead and introduce my fantastic panel. To my left, Mark Donica. I'm the panel. Hello. Hello, Megan. How are you doing today, Mark? I'm doing wonderful today. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, I'm Megan Salinas. You guys can tweet at me at the Manguin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. Sadly, the rest of our panel could not be here, but we will all be together tonight uh, for the after show later on this evening. You know who we do have? We do have someone special. If we do. We do. Do the honors. Uh, ladies like. and gentlemen, we would like to welcome to the show at this time the one and the only Mrs. Lindsay Jones. Hello. How's it going, everybody? Doing pretty great. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Glad to be back. <laughs> Our pleasure. First of all, well, we want to say first and foremost, congratulations again on your wonderful announcement uh, that you guys made during the Extra Life stream. Could not be happier for you guys. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Hey, we have an extra life. I mean, it seemed to fit. Why not stay <laughs> there, right? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I, I think it was a very fitting event to make the announcement. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, yeah. We're, uh, what did I say? We're excited and terrified is the best way to describe it. <laughs> I, I think Michael's uh, drunken, like, me, I'm going to have a kid, was probably yep. uh, the most telling of, uh, of the future of this child. That's what we're saying. If we can do it, anyone can. Yeah, that's the thing is nobody's ready until they're really ready. And that, that's the thing is you'll, you'll know what to do when the time comes. So don't be nervous at all. Got that like motherly intuition. It'll just come to me like spidey senses. <laughs> <laughs> you'll just be able to sense danger from afar. <laughs> <Huh>. <laughs> uh, so uh, getting, uh, getting to this season, um, it's been a long time coming. Everyone's been really excited ever since the character um, trailer from uh, that was released at RTX and it was just released to the public about a month or so ago. Now that everyone's gotten to see the first few episodes, how does it feel getting to see fans uh, reaction to this new chapter in the show? Oh, it's awesome. Every time we get to see fans reactions to, I mean, every season that we put out or every volume, it's been so rewarding, especially with the amount of fans who are receiving our new content or even new fans who are uh, just finding just finding Ruby for the first time. Uh, and Volume 4 is no exception for sure, especially with the new uh, style that you're seeing in the animation. There's a lot more definition. Uh, we actually moved over to animation clients. We're working in Maya now instead of Poser. So the biggest thing that you're seeing is a lot of uh, shadow passes and lighting uh, lighting cues, mm -hmm. I guess is the best way to describe it. But even even that little tiny detail has really made an impact on our fan base, and we're excited to show them more. When did you first see the new Maya style? I think I saw it for the first time, which is a small playbust, because I, like many of the other Ruby actors, we like to creep on our servers, and if there's even a tiny bit of an update, we're like, oh, well, we got to check it out real quick. So um, I saw maybe like one or two frames of someone moving like this, and, and just that definition alone was enough to say, this is going to be huge. People are going to love this, and sure enough. Yeah, I think my favorite bit is the the better definition in the backgrounds and the the increased subtlety in the facial expressions. It's just it makes the series and the show like come to life in a way it hasn't before. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people were saying uh, they really enjoyed the facial expressions and ear movement in episode three. I won't spoil anything, but uh, <laughs> Blake has a lot of uh, emotions that she's going through. And then her uh, her performance is really enhanced by these new features that we really haven't had a chance to play with before. Yeah, um, and that kind of ties into to what we're talking about today. Emotionally speaking, this volume starts off in a much darker place than the previous seasons, and Ruby as a character has always been very bright and optimistic, but there's always been that undercurrent of tragedy, and I think you've done a really great job of portraying that, but do you tend to find that balance between optimism and tragedy difficult to portray, particularly for this volume when the world around her is getting darker and darker? Yeah, um, people ask how has the performance changed as we moved along volumes. Um, 
obviously the voice is very similar, but I think the performance and inspiration for the performance is definitely different. I mean, clearly Ruby's gone through a lot in volumes uh, one and two. She already had the the precursor of her mother uh, being absent from her life. And now on top of that, she has many more people who are close to her are now absent in her life. So she has to move forward from that and not only find strength within herself, but within uh, her friends now and not even her teammates, her teammates are gone. So she's trying to find, you know, some support from anyone around her. So it's it's going to be an interesting journey as you follow her. And and you had mentioned, uh, I think previously on, on one of our shows, that you used to get into character listening to Red Like Roses Part 2. Has that changed, or do you listen to any I new know. tracks? I still listen to that, and I cry like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'll go into my little sadness corner and just listen to that and go, oh, God, the emotions. But <laughs> uh, no, uh, if anything, I actually just recorded a, a couple of new episodes yesterday. And uh, same thing, they were very emotional scenes. And um, it uh, the music itself it really, really helps. But now we've actually moved over to a new area. Our whole animation team is gone and we have a new recording booth. So I get to play with even more space and I can help, uh, that can help with my performance as far as actually like, you know, really feeling the sadness and getting to like physically portray that as I, as I do the voice. I'm sure that helps with efforts too. Like, oh yeah. Uh, Definitely. Have you done any recordings in the new space with other actors, or is it still a one-person booth? So far, uh, we've only done one person, but we mm -hmm. do have room now to fit up to four people, I was Hell told. Yeah. So we could literally have all of Team Ruby in one room together interacting with each other, which is phenomenal. That's exciting. It's really cool. That's that's something we've been we've been kind of like, come on, let them all record together for a little bit. <laughs> and and yeah, The only time that we've done that was a table read that we had uh, in volume, maybe leading up to volume two, I'm pretty sure, but that was it. Mm hmm um speaking of the recording process uh one of our fans wanted to know at aaron underscore gene uh what is the recording process like how far ahead do you record the dialogue in regards to when episodes are released uh usually we get the scripts pretty close to when we record understandably the writers don't want to you know spoil anything for us or just in case have things get out that shouldn't be out yeah. so um again we get them usually a day before we record, but that's still enough time for me to prep and understand what needs to happen. And honestly, I kind of like that more. So it's not this like daunting thought in my head of like, okay, now you got to prep for this. It's like, I'm discovering these new things along with Ruby. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's something that we get asked a lot about like how much you guys get told in advance. We had one person asking if you knew about Salem prior to the reveal. I imagine, yeah, they, they do the best they jo job they can to keep you guys in the dark as much as possible. Yeah, well, specifically with Salem, I will say, uh, before the show even started, Monty uh, briefed us on, you know, seasons and seasons that he had planned and all these ideas. So a lot of things that you are seeing come to fruition now are things that he talked to us about before the show even existed. So things like Salem or, uh, I mean, uh, Crow, Uncle Crow as a character, he was uh, explained to me before we started the show. But yeah. Yeah, because I think uh, when we had Shannon on, he had mentioned how he knew the his whole three-season arc and that may be the entire arc of that character, we we are yet to find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know Barbara was told about her uh, her sad loss as well before she uh, began the show, so we braced oh. for that. Same thing with Jen Brown. Um, they told her before she began voicing the character, like, hey, you know, this is going to happen, just a heads up. So she wasn't blindsided, basically. I think I think in cases like that, for, for Pira specifically, it's it's good to prep. So, mm. yeah, exactly as you said. Uh, I do uh, Though I do think she was like, all right, let me have one other person. Newscaster, Lisa Lavender, in it. Uh, I'm, I got it. Perfect. Hey, she made a return in this volume. Volume yep. 4, Lisa's back. Oh, yeah. I, it was so nice to see. Uh, speaking of, uh, Ruby is, an, a, again, a very different place this season. Uh, did you ever imagine that Team Ruby would be broken up? And uh, what are your thoughts on her being with a new team this season? Honestly, well, personally, I really didn't think that the team would be broken up. I thought that there would maybe be some uh, trials and tribulations that might separate certain characters emotionally, and maybe they would gravitate towards the others. But as far as physically being separated, no, not really. And it's very interesting to play with that now, um, especially this new dynamic with uh, Team Ranger, as I call it. Uh, get out of here, Team Junior. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's exciting. I mean, Jean is the first friend that Ruby had whenever she first came to Beacon. So now we get to see a few more moments between the two and see how they're their relationships grow especially because they both took their losses you know very personally um same thing with nora and ren they've always been very close but now you get to see their interactions with ruby and jean uh which really hasn't been played into before and you're going to see a little bit more of that as well yeah and i think um 
talking about that support, I think Ruby's actually in a very good place compared to a lot of the other members of Team Ruby because she is surrounded by friends and they're all still kind of mutually dealing with the loss mm -hmm. while all her other friends are a little bit more isolated and kind of have to work out their individual stories on their own. Yeah, and I think uh, as, as much as I'm looking forward to the relationship between Ruby and Jean Grow, uh, we saw in the first episode that Ruby still thinks Jean is a huge dork with, with the bunny hoodie. And I'm, oh, I'm sure fans all over are waiting to see that hoodie get released officially as a product on the Rooster Teeth store. Hey, we would love to sell that. I think um, <laughs> personally, I would buy my own and wear it all the time. <laughs> Ruby thinks it's dorky. Lindsay thinks it's awesome. Hell yeah. It's adorable. Yeah, it's Punk and Pete. I'm all about it. Aw. Um, we were wondering, um, do you guys know about how many cha uh, uh, chapters are going to be in this volume? Is it uh, going to be about 12 or are we going to get a little bit more this season? To my understanding, we're going to get a little bit more, but I don't want to speak on behalf of the writers just in case. So I'll put a little like asterisk disclaimer. <laughs> fair enough. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, we have a question from Twitter. What's been the most rewarding part of being in Ruby so far? Uh, the fan reception, honestly. <clears throat> I always thought that being a voice actor would be fantastic. I grew up about 15 minutes away from Funimation, but that was a very lofty, you know, kind of pie in the sky dream. I never really thought that that would ever be something I would seriously consider. And now to have people say, hey, I love your work. I think you're a fantastic professional voice actor is incredible. And again, <laughs> I very, very humbling. I don't know if we deserve that kind of credit, but yeah, uh, getting to go, to go to conventions and see people dressed up as uh, Team Ruby, uh, having people say, hey, I love this show so much. And because of this show, I've now made so many friends or I've started dating someone. I've seen people say that, hey, Ruby had helped me find my husband or wife. And that's fantastic. Aww. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. Um, talking about being a longtime anime fan, what was your reaction when you found out about the casting choices for this season? Because I geeked out a little bit. I was like, oh, my gosh, guys. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I was very excited. Same thing with Volume 3. I mean, now I, I, we get to work alongside Vic Mignogna and Elizabeth Maxwell and Chris Sabat, Travis Willingham, Laura Bailey. I mean, that list right there is phenomenal. And again, something that I never, ever thought we would ever get to do. And we always joke that uh, whenever we do scenes with them, we listen to them and go, oh, wow, that's fantastic. And now I'm talking. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, that'd be a fun blooper. Just like, you're, but you're you're from that one show that i love so much um yeah, like ruby in volume one which is like oh you're a real huntress can i get your autograph that's <laughs> me with all of them um speaking of enemy though are you watching anything right now because it's a big season yeah i haven't dabbled in yuri on ice yet everyone says i must check that out you'll get there uh, yes the most recent that we've looked at is Seven Deadly Sins, and we are caught up on that. I oh. actually got to meet the voice actor for Meliodas this weekend, or this weekend, uh, this past couple weekends at MCM London. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe we could uh, try and work out something with him. Uh, speaking of MCM London, uh, Yale says hi. Uh, she, oh, she, <laughs> she caught us in the studio a little bit before the interview. Yeah, and the rest of uh, our panel also sends their regards and their love. Oh, thank you. Much love back. So, um, again, being a longtime anime fan, uh, if you could be cast in any cartoon or anime, what would you like to be cast in? Ooh, recently Michael and I have really been getting into Rick and Morty, and we said if we could just have one line, just one little thing on that show, we would be floored. Well, all, love a dub dub. well all, all you gotta do, uh, <laughs> talk to talk to Aaron Hansen. He's he's got an in. He was on the season finale, of season two. So. Oh yeah, yeah. really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, no Possible. Good for him. That's Making awesome. dreams come true. That would be amazing. He was the, uh, I am a, a robot that takes pictures. Do not be alarmed when I'm looking at you. Yeah. Totally. Oh, that's funny. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know. Nice. <laughs> there you go. That's hilarious. Um, and and I know I know you get this question a lot, but it's it's not it's nice to be reminded. And and a lot of our, our we have some new fans this season. But what is your advice to any aspiring voice actor? Uh, the biggest thing I could say is go out and actually you know try it. Make a demo reel. Just sit down and record yourself doing silly voices. That's honestly how a lot of people get impressions of characters that already exist or try and just tweak some voices that you like to play around with. And they're already in doing that. You basically have the structure of a demo reel. And that's what a lot of professional voice actors send out for auditions or uh, for casting calls. So right there, you've already got a great start. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, to get back to uh, kind of what's going on with Ruby in this volume, we had a, another fan on Twitter, standing by, at Standing By Life on Twitter asks, what do you think Ruby was feeling when she discovers Jean practicing late at night with the video recording of Pira? Uh, I believe that she 
honestly feels a lot of loss and a lot of sympathy for uh, Jean because their relationship was a little bit different, Jean and Pyrrhus, clearly, than Ruby and Pyrrhus. But uh, she witnessed the entire thing. She witnessed uh, Pyrrha leaving, like physically leaving and disintegrating in front of her. So I think that's also very emotional for her to kind of relive in her head through her friend. But I think at the same time, it's probably very inspiring for her because he is training and taking this sadness as a motivator to improve himself and move forward with his life. So I think she's also taking that and saying, okay, maybe I need to do the same. I like that. I like that too. Um, now, be because of the uh, emotional weight that has been added for for Volume 4, as as well as the end of Volume 3, uh, Jay Blue Eyed Stairs asks, what has been the hardest line to record for Ruby? Ooh. Uh, again, no spoilers, but the hardest line that I had to give was uh, three simple words. It's leave her alone. Aww. And um, if you know what's happening, then that's why. And it's because it was very emotional and there's a lot of different motivational factors behind it. So to try and encapsulate all that in, again, three lines was a little bit tricky, but mm -hmm. I think we got it. Um, other than that, as far as getting a little more technical, laughing and crying as Ruby is very interesting because I, I already have to uh, pitch shift my voice to do the voice. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was very... It was very difficult to try and figure out how that would sound exactly, but I think I've got it, especially in volume four. You hear Ruby like off on a, you know, laughing fit, and I think it worked. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got I got goosebumps when you said leave her alone. It's just like, ah. Oh. oh, thanks. <laughs> the, um, uh, so talking about that, um, let's see. Uh, what do you think was the most heartbreaking moment from volume three? Uh, Barbara and I agree that the, most heartbreaking moment for us would be the very end of volume three. And again, we won't spoil too much for anyone who hasn't seen it, but Ruby and Yang have a very poignant scene in which they're both coming together after all of this tragedy has happened at the end of the volume. And it's an emotional area that both of them had not really explored before. They're both very happy go lucky characters in volumes one and two, uh, specifically Yang. She's always been, you know, very much like a motherly figure to Ruby, um, as her older sister. And in this scene, they're interacting with each other and, Yang basically says, I'm not here to guide you anymore. So oh. Ruby has to accept the fact that Yang has changed as a, as a person, and so has she, and that everything lying in front of her now is going to be completely different than it was before. Mm -hmm. um, in, in chat, really quickly, somebody brings up a very interesting point. Um, right now, uh, everybody, uh, everybody in Team Ranger is mourning Pira. Does that take away at all from Ruby being able to mourn Another character that we lost in Volume 3, very, very roughly, especially at Pyrrha's hand. Uh, mm. Again, without being too specific. Oh, no. Uh, I don't think it takes away from it. If anything, I feel like it wraps, uh, for my performance especially, it wraps all together mm -hmm. in remembering Pyrrha's loss. Then you're also saying, okay, we've lost this other person as well. I think it all accumulates together. At the same time, too, you might be seeing a little bit more uh, exploration into that relationship later on. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, talk, tying into that, um, since, again, we're, we're starting to see the, the after effects of these losses and the, the repercussions of those actions, do you have any life-changing experiences that went into your performance for Volume 4? Ooh. Oh, man. Uh, I'm like, I wish I could say that. Goodness. Um, and there's been loss in my family. I mean, I feel like that's uh, common for a lot of people. And I think everyone can draw some similarities from what Ruby has experienced. And, you know, going back to the fan interaction, I've had many people come up to me and say, hey, I've, I've lost my mother as well. And I feel like I can really relate to Ruby or, um, you know, I just lost my friend and I understand what she's going through. And I feel like I can kind of cope with what I'm dealing with by watching Ruby. Do you think your, uh, your becoming a mother is going to affect your performance at all? <laughs> Maybe physically. People say my voice is going to drop, so that'll be interesting. Mm. Uh, <laughs> emotionally, yeah, probably. Uh, I, I mean, I. This is all very new to me, so as I will be exploring being a mother uh, as as best as I can before I actually have the thing. But it's probably going to be a play it by ear kind of scenario. Yeah. Um, I probably there's going to be a lot more sentiment, I think, and a lot more uh, intimacy with uh, everyone else in the show, especially. Maybe I could understand Yang and Ruby's relationship a little bit more, since Yang, uh, again, is very much a motherly figure for Ruby in the absence of her own mother. So, yeah. So, uh, kind of tying into that, we had at uh, Mr. Spooky on Twitter wanted to know if there's ever uh, a flashback, would you want to provide the voice for Summer Rose? People have asked that before. I... Hmm. 
would be honored to do so. But honestly, I think it'd be interesting to have someone else voice it. Uh, especially again, if we're working with this phenomenal voice cast that we've never had the chance to play around with before, I would love to bring in somebody else. Yeah, speaking about, again, the, the cast for this season, our cast of villains has expanded quite a bit. Uh, we were, you know, at the very beginning of Volume 4, we get introduced to this really creepy evil council that is both very intriguing but also very menacing. Uh, who do you think is your favorite new villain so far? Of the ones we've seen. Ooh, okay. Well, uh, Salem, obviously, I think she is, one, her design is phenomenal. I love uh, the look overall, especially the, uh, I don't know, her hair is the best way that I can describe it. I was going to say her hair piece as well. I know there's bits of jewelry actually hanging inside of it, but uh, especially the presence that she has when she enters a room, you can tell instantly that she is in command and ready to go, and people better listen up and do what she says. No, yeah. I agree. Yeah, no, <laughs> and not to mention, it's so nice to hear the narrator from volume one come back and turn out to be the big villain like that was such a great reveal it's so oh, yeah. and uh jen taylor who does the voice is just i think that was excellent casting and it's we're so used to hearing her as a friendly voice that it's really cool seeing her play this menacing figure Mm. Well, even when we started the show, too, back in volume one, again, we knew that Salem was going to be this character and that Jen would be voicing her. And we had the same thoughts of like, oh, man, people don't even know this narrator is explaining this world to them. But little do they know that's going to that's going to turn on them. I, I will say um, I went to one of the volume three screenings before the release of volume four. And, and even even though the majority of that crowd was half cosplay, uh, even a couple of new viewers, the, the reveal at the very end was just like, what like everybody it's still it's still goosebumps and, and chills and and things of that nature um we got a, a another question on twitter uh addison steel 24-hour call center asks if ruby could meet anybody not on her path who would she meet so for example somebody that we've seen in uh weiss's storyline like whitley or klein or the ship captain uh who who do you think ruby would would uh want to meet Got you. I feel like she would want to meet Klein. She's already met Winter, and they had a very interesting exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, so Klein would be very interesting as well, especially because he seems to be a little bit more sinister than her other uh, family members. But again, I don't know too much about the script, so this is just me speculating as well, along with you, audience. But it'd be very interesting to see that dynamic with Ruby speaking to Klein and trying to, you know, feel each other out. Like, what do you, what do you really want here? What is this guy about? Yeah. Exactly. What's your game? <laughs> the um. Uh, we, we've been talking a lot about how the World of Remnants shorts have really been expanding the world, and we were asking one another on the panel last week if you could vacation anywhere uh, at any of the Kingdoms of Remnant, where would you take a vacation to? Ooh, I would really want to check out Menagerie. From what I understand, that's supposed to be a really fun place. And um, I personally love the Faunus a lot, and I'd be interested to see what other kind of Faunus varieties there are. That would be sick. Nailed it. <laughs> quick to the point it's like you've answered these questions before uh, <laughs> um uh really quickly this is just sort of for um for, for something i uh, i want to know it's not may not necessarily be ruby related but at rtx we had several fans come up to us and just refer to x-ray and vav season three is this wishful thinking or is it something that we can expect in the future uh right now it's wishful thinking cool. i wish i could say that we knew anything more about it but just the fact that X-Ray and Vav existed alone is enough for me. I'm honored that people uh, not only got to see the show, but loved it and enjoyed it. Mm. So um, for now, enjoy what already is out there. Wonderful. Thank you. I mean, technically, this does relate to Ruby because Hilda is in uh, End of Volume 3. Um, <laughs> it's true. That yeah. was wonderful. I think that's been my <laughs> favorite Easter egg. Feet. <laughs> yep. I think that's been my favorite Easter egg so far. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, so, Yeah. The uh, talking about Easter eggs, what do you think is your favorite subtle nod that's been in Ruby to the other Rooster Teeth stuff? I really like, uh, well, going back to X-Ray and Bab as well, how those uh, comics are actually on the stand when you first meet Ruby. That was pretty phenomenal. And then also a lot of the <clears throat> crossover as well. Like uh, when you first enter Hilda's lab, you see Yang's uh, gauntlets hanging on the wall. So I, I always love a little tongue in cheek uh, nods. Uh, from a personal standpoint, too, I'm a very big fan of the uh, boy band poster from Achievement Hunter on Yang's wall. Because, of course, she'd be a fan of boy bands. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Uh, I, I like how uh, That's My Uncle has developed a new life of its own in Ruby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and it's <laughs> and since now, become its own anime. If, if there are times where people meet Vic or send me pictures of it, I'm like, oh, that, that literally is my uncle now. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is that is great. Um, getting to the like the lighter side of things, Ruby Chibi uh, this summer was a delightful, soothing bomb in the wake of the end of Volume Three. <laughs> what do you think was your favorite uh, bit from uh, from Ruby Chibi this year? I loved when they did uh, the play performance of Little Red Riding Hood. Just because seeing all the fans or the uh, Team Ruby interaction with each other is so wonderful, especially in this positive environment that you haven't really seen before. And again, it's very, very tongue in cheek. I think uh, Blake's one liners are probably my favorite part. She's just so quick to like, like shoot back at Ruby, like, nope, shutting down, shutting you down, shutting you down. It, it was wonderful. Yeah, the uh, I think um, my favorites were the Torchwick and Neo interactions, and she's basically just like Wiley e. Coyote with the little with the little signs. Those were my favorite. Oh yeah, and she had one uh, a gasp in Volume Three, so people were like, "Oh, is that? Does she have a voice actor now?" I'm like, "No, no, no, no you're good. She's just gonna be, you know, same old Neo." Uh, another question from the chat from uh, K Bits asks: Ruby versus Kimball versus Iron Hilda, who wins? Oh man, Ooh. I would assume Iron Hilda, but if anything, maybe they would all just come together and like self, like blow each other up and, and once, much like a Voltorb. <laughs> <laughs> self destruct. I mean, they just talk it out. Yeah. Yeah. Kimball's diplomatic. That's actually how uh, World War Three ends: is all of them come together and everything, everything in the world explodes. It's just <laughs> devastated. Yep. And I'm sure, I'm sure you've been asked before, but uh, Ernie Genie on Twitter wants to know what would be your semblance. My semblance, if I had a preference, it would be to uh, summon cats and just have them work for me. Maybe form like cat suits around me or just attack people at whim. That'd be wonderful. Just fire just lines of cats. Yeah. Pro projecting. Like never ending, like footballs. <laughs> that's well. That's a perfect question. Uh, to, to, you all right? Okay. Sorry. You you broke uh, you broke Megan. Uh, <laughs> sorry. That's my other semblance. <laughs> I will break you. Yep. Um, to kind of get back again, the, the fan interaction has been so great. What is your favorite thing about, uh, getting a chance to spend time with the community at these various conventions and just, you guys have been also very just engaged with them online. Uh, what, what is it like getting to spend time with the community? It's inspiring for us and it motivates us to keep you know making the show and keep being involved with, uh, with the fan base. Uh, we say all the time fans will meet us and they say, oh, thank you so much for voicing these characters and creating this world that we get to play. And we're like, no, thank you. You're the ones inspiring us to continue. And without you watching, there would be no Ruby. So I think that's the most rewarding part for me. And again, everyone has such a different personal story involving Ruby. So I love getting to hear how each person you know, interacts with each other or interacts with their friends while they're watching Ruby or how they take in the new, uh, uh, developing plot from Ruby as we move along with everybody else. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but before we go, one last question from Twitter. Um, Roz Mystica zero one asks, what are your thoughts on Ruby's new outfit and which one of the outfits is your favorite? Ooh, I'm a fan of this new outfit. I like it a lot. Um, especially with all the, the wear and tear that you see on her cape and on her leggings. It's actually pretty symbolic for what she's gone through. She's, you know, especially coming after volume three, there's been a lot of uh, wear and tear in her emotional life. So now you get to see it physically represented in her, her persona. So that, that probably is my favorite, this new volume four outfit. I, I love the costuming subtext that that occur in shows, movies, whatever. I, I love that sort of stuff. And anytime I bring it up for Star Wars or whatever, people are like, how did you even see that? That doesn't even make any sense. But I, I love that it's it's being uh, portrayed in, in Ruby so much. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I think it speaks volumes about where each of these characters are at. About four volumes. Exactly. Um, we want to, um, Lindsay, thank you so much for, for spending some time uh, to talk to us, talk to the fans. Um, sort of as a wrap-up, is there anything that you want to say to the fans to tease the rest of Volume 4? Ooh. Well, again, thank you all very much. The only thing that I will tease is that Ruby ain't going nowhere. Yay! <laughs> um, do you have any other upcoming projects that you can talk about that you'd like to pe people to know about? I know that a lot of times uh, it's hard, it's difficult to talk about things that are still in the works, but if there's anything you'd like to plug, please feel free. 
Yeah, actually, I know a lot of people uh, still haven't checked out Camp Camp yet. Uh, we actually wrapped season one recently, so you should absolutely go check that out. And you'll hear a lot of the voice actors who are in Ruby are also playing characters in Camp Camp. They sound different, but it'll, it'll be fun to kind of pick and choose like, oh, hey, that's that person and that person. Just, uh, yeah, not to go off on a tangent, but um, both yours and uh, Barbara's performance in Camp Camp, it's it's just phenomenal. Wonderful. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. And was... when I would... Um, uh... I leaned over to my wife while we were watching uh, Volume 3 uh, in the movie theater. And then when Mercury was giving, like, a really dramatic line, like, spitting on his dad, I went, that's Neil. And she went, what? And everyone, shh. It's amazing. <laughs> Beautiful yeah, moment. Yeah, Gary Lowenthal. Yeah, he's wonderful. An incredible person. Same thing. I mean, Michael talks all the time about how he gets to act opposite of Yuri now, who we just met at Supernova and had, you know, very much of a fangirl moment. Like, oh, my God, you're Yuri. And now we're, we're friends with him and coworkers. That's it's wonderful. I, I would recommend Camp Camp as well. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Well, again, thank you so so much, Lindsay, for for taking thank the time you. to talk to us today. Where can people go if they want to keep up with you? If you want to check me out on Twitter, I am I am Lindsay Jones, and you can also follow our work on YouTube at uh, youtubecom roosterteeth Also, our website uh, roosterteeth.com, and that's where you can check out a lot of our content as well as a lot of fan forums if you want to get involved with the community and find other Ruby fans. Well, again, cannot say thank you enough. This has definitely been the highlight of my day. It's always a pleasure <laughs> yep. talking to you. You're too sweet. Thank you very much. Goodness. Thanks, Lindsay. We'll see you soon. Bye. Well, that was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's always a pleasure getting to talk to the cast. They they are amazing. Thank you so much to Rooster Teeth for, for allowing us yes. to um, the, have these amazing interactions. The, with the cast we've always been close to the PR teams, uh, whether directly Rooster Teeth or, or another company, and they're, they're coming through for us again. You wanted guests. We're getting you guests, damn it. Um, and we're talking to a lot of people right now to be both on the regular after show, and we're going to start to, if, if timing doesn't work out for being specifically on the after show, we're going to do more stuff like this where it may not be Thursday, it might be Sunday. Uh, time Monday zones too. are a pain, guys. Ta time zones are a pain, and, and we do our show at 7. That's 9 o'clock, and, and people might be in crunch mode. And guess what, guys? They are working extremely hard to make this season the best that it can be. This season, they're working on other animation projects. They're uh, they're doing production right now on the Funhouse animated series Sex Swing. Uh, so the, the, that, along with any other projects. Lindsay was talking about Camp Camp. We, we did a Camp Camp after show, and the, the show show itself and the after show and all of the interactions that we had at rtx were so much fun so please join in that fun what become a rooster chief member become a first member watch it or watch it on youtube and then watch our our after show because because that was so much fun yes our after show is going to be tonight at 7 p.m pacific standard time uh we are going to be covering uh episode three from this season as well as the latest world of remnant lots to talk about a lot of really great action sequence stuff it's going to be an absolute hoot. Mark, where can people go if they want to keep up with you? An absolute hoot. Um, at, that was dumb. I'm sorry. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Mark B. Donica. You can also find me on the Rooster Teeth site at Mark B. Donica. Uh, find all of us. We have a group Twitter account that I still can't seem to understand how to tag people in photos for because that failed a couple of times. Uh, at ABTV Rooster Team on Twitter, on Instagram, we have a group on the Rooster Teeth uh, website. So please join us. Join in the conversation. We're going to be doing a lot more interaction with y'all. We're, we're running a contest right now. We uh, are. On Megan's Twitter, on my Twitter, and on Katie's Twitter. That's at Kia J K K I A X E T. Uh, mine, Mark Bidonica, and Megan's, which she'll tell you in a second. We're giving away three copies of the season four. 14 of red versus blue you can enter all you have to do is find our tweets on our on our twitter pages and retweet them we're still taking entries up until ruby tonight so go check that out megan back I, to you i've got mine pinned to my twitter profile oh, so uh, shoot. I so yeah do that. if you guys are having trouble in finding that just go to my twitter it's at the menguin that's t-g-m-e-n-g-u-i-n -E it's literally the first tweet you'll see because it's pinned right up there and, and each account <laughs> is picking a different winner so but yeah I was having problems tagging people in photos, too. So I think oh, it might okay. just be a Twitter thing. Twitter. Um, but again, you guys can follow me there on Twitter and uh, at that same uh, account on Instagram. Um, I'm also on a bunch of shows here at AfterBuzz, and I write articles for the movie Chick. That's Chick with two Ks. Be sure to check those out. Again, thank you to everybody in the live chat, everybody in the hashtag. Thank you again to Rooster Teeth and to Lindsay Jones. You guys are all fantastic. We will see you all next time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. 
To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Dust, Dust you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only. Do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.